And ABC News audio reporter Jordana Miller joins me now from Jerusalem with more on the response to these hostages. Just Jordana, thanks for coming on. I know there are massive protests all across Israel. Workers are striking, essentially calling on Netanyahu and, and blaming him in a way for not having struck some kind of deal to bring these hostages home sooner. So where does that all stand now? Well, I think many Israelis would agree with what President Biden said. Uh, they simply do not believe that the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is doing enough to reach a ceasefire. And now, after seeing American pressure and more than uh, nearly a year of war, uh, Israelis, I think, after the execution of these six hostages, including that American, Hirsch, it's been a kind of tipping point. And now Israelis are so angry, they're taking to the streets, and they simply don't believe that anything else will make a difference except maybe hundreds of thousands of people in the streets every day, the Israeli economy, uh, you know, screeching to a halt or close to that, uh, the pictures radiated around the world. They're hoping this will put pressure on Netanyahu. Many believe that he simply is putting his own political survival ahead of a ceasefire. And that's because many in his coalition on the far right say, you know, we're going to bolt the government, bring it uh, crashing down if Netanyahu signs a deal. They call a ceasefire deal reckless because in their minds, they don't believe Hamas has yet been defeated. And so there's such a loss of trust between the Israeli people and its leadership that it has come to this call now for uh, sustained days of protest in the streets. Uh, and this could make a difference if it is, again, sustained. And remember, Israel's defense establishment, including its defense minister, Yoav Gallant, really sides with the protesters. He's been calling on Netanyahu to soften his position for weeks and weeks, saying that, it, that Netanyahu's demand to keep Israeli troops on the Gazan side of the border to Egypt is just not justified, that the Israeli army can handle any operational challenges of a ceasefire, and they could come back in if there's a violation of the deal. The defense minister, the defense establishment, they want to pause this war. They want to get out any hostages that are still alive and really bring everyone home, including those who deserve a proper burial. Jordana, protests have been going on essentially since the October 7th attack, especially with families or extended families, people close to these hostages. Does it feel different now? And why do you think these protests might actually result in a change? I think that's a, a great question, Diane. First of all, it does feel different. Um, I really believe that the the execution of those six hostages, the fact that Israelis found out that these six were killed just maybe 48 hours before the Israeli army could reach them in a tunnel, highlighted the danger that the Israeli hostages are facing every single minute, hour, and day. And essentially, people said, enough is enough. You know, we need to get out in, into the streets. And so Last night, we saw record numbers, Diane. We saw over 250,000 Israelis in the streets. That's what we saw, you know, in the run-up to the, before the war, during the conflict and debates over the judicial reform here in Israel. It's a huge number. And today, almost a million workers taking part in the, that national strike. Um, so I think this is a kind of tipping point. This is a moment uh, where we could see a change. Uh, and I think that somewhere the Israelis have just had enough and they feel like they need to go out now and make the difference. If, it, if it's not going to be, you know, the Americans make, putting pressure or the, the Israeli army, then they're going to do it themselves. All right. ABC's Jordana Miller in Jerusalem for us. Thanks, Jordana.